Our understanding of history, in particular societal development, might not always be fully accurate. Especially when it comes to technology. We think of everyone in the past as just having sharpened sticks, but some societies may have had better tech than we realize. These are 20 ancient technologies far too advanced for their time. Number 20. The Repeating Crossbow Weapons technology is easily one of those things that humanity can point to so that our advancement can be shown off in full. I mean, after all, even in the earliest days of man, they used things like rocks and pointy sticks for weapons, and then they were able to forge weapons like swords, proper spears, and the like. And then, of course, there came the bow. As one villain in Iron Man would note, the invention of the bow had helped to grow an empire across most of Asia, which shows just how important it was. And surely enough, many civilizations had their own version of the bow and arrow that they used to fight enemy factions. But when it came to China, not only did they, like certain other nations, take their bow game to the next level with the invention of the crossbow, they were able to buff it to a whole completely different level with the invention of the repeating crossbow. As the name would suggest, the point of the weapon was to fire multiple bolts within a few moments. Typically, crossbows are great for a single shot, and then you have to go through the arduous task of reloading them, which can take seconds to minutes, and in the heat of combat, that can be your death sentence. But when you have a repeater crossbow, well, that's impressive. But the fact that they were able to make one that did some serious damage and fulfilled the repeating guideline is impressive in a lot of ways. Because even in modern society, making a repeater weapon for something like a crossbow or even a gun takes seriously advanced parts. After all, you have to account for the moving parts, potential jamming, and more, and to be fair, the repeating crossbow the Chinese had was not the most accurate weapon, but it was used for war, and it was also used by non-combatants to warn off robbers and thieves. Given the various advancements that China has made over its numerous dynasties, we really shouldn't be all that surprised that they were able to pull something like this off. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. While the Wright brothers invented human flight, that's not to say people didn't try before, and some of those attempts might have been more successful than we think. For example, some people are saying, Ancient Egypt made planes way earlier than we thought. A few Egyptologists are claiming to have found traces of incredibly early prototypes for flying contraptions, and they've been able to ascertain for sure is that ancient Egyptians built plane-like machines. What we have no way of knowing is if they actually worked. What do you think? As always, you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below by using the hashtag SweetTopic. Number 19. Tassara Conteras one of the things that you may immediately recognize about this warship is that it is truly a giant. It's important to note here that this was not powered by any kind of motors. It was actually powered entirely by humans who were rowing the boat from within. Talk about having a lot of strong-armed people to get the thing moving. And if you're curious, it's said that this vessel had about 6,000 men on board. That easily compares to the aircraft carriers of modern times. Can you even imagine being on the shore of a nation and then slowly seeing this thing grow in the distance? The terror alone would probably be enough to make you fall over as it slowly loomed over you. They were so massive that they were called floating fortresses, which is rather fair given their proportions. And given its size, you may be wondering if the thing did actually exist, and the answer is yes. There are multiple accounts of this ship being created, but there is a twist. You see, with something that large and needing so much manpower, it wasn't exactly an effective warship. You have to remember that in those times, your ships needed to be fast and maneuverable so that you could do damage to the enemy. A big lumbering behemoth like this wouldn't have been mobile, even with thousands of people rowing it. And thus, it was apparently more of a prestige piece than anything else, once again proving that bigger may not always be better. Number 18. The Chariot 
Now, you may think that it's odd that I'm going to talk about a chariot when it comes to advanced technologies that nations shouldn't have had in ancient times, but if you really think about it, the chariot is actually an excellent example of developing things with the resources you had and making something special. After all, as many people have noted, the chariot was not only an idea that people came up with, it was a natural evolution of the technology of the time, specifically ones that involved horses. After all, horses were often used to help ease the work of early men, and as technology grew, so did their options. And then one day, somebody realized that they could use a vehicle-type thing behind a horse and then go into battle and do things that wouldn't be so easy if they were simply guiding the horse themselves. If you think about it, while groups led by Attila the Hun were experts on shooting bows from horses, it did take a whole lot of practice in order to get accurate, and you could just as easily be picked off of the horse while aiming at your foes. But with a chariot, you had the horse blocking the view while you aimed at them, and you were on a stable base so that you could get a more proper aim to begin with. You also had a lot more time to prepare, and at least a little bit of shielding around you. That meant that you didn't need to use shorter bows to get your shot offs, you could use the long bow, and in Egypt they had developed chariots to such great effect that there was a unit of chariot archers within the king's personal military guard. They used these chariots to great effect while in battle. Now sure, they did break down a lot, but they also clearly had enough advantages to keep being used. Number 17. Shadoof One of the reasons that people seriously underestimate people from the ancient times is that they sometimes feel they weren't creative enough to get a solution to their problem accomplished. But the opposite was quite true, and sometimes the inventions they made were so good that they still endure to this day. For example, the Shadoof is a device that is used today in countries like India but were in use ever since 3000 BC. That's right, this singular invention, with a rather basic purpose, has been in use for over 5,000 years and counting. The Shadoof is used to lift water from a water source onto land or into another waterway or basin. The mechanism is comprised of a long counterbalance pole on a pivot with a bucket that's attached to the end of it. It's generally used in a crop irrigation system using basins, dikes, ditches, walls, canals, and other similar waterways. And given how many of those things were used in ancient times, you can see why so many people thought it was useful. Another thing that needs to be pointed out is that unlike many other things that you've seen today, they were actually easy to build. When you have something that doesn't break your back to make, well, you know you're doing something right. Plus, with its efficient system, just about anyone could use it, and that also meant that it was an invention that could spread far and wide to whatever water sources were around. Given how it was constructed, it could easily go six meters deep into the ground, which was often more than enough to get the water that was needed. Number 16. Shaping Tools Now we're going back to ancient Egypt once again. And one of the reasons that many people, including myself, keep going back there is for the simple reason that their methods for construction and getting things completed was so precise and revolutionary for its time that I honestly don't know how they did it. For example, when you look at certain relics from ancient Egypt, you're going to notice that the Egyptians were able not only to carve into the stones or other hard materials, but to shape them to their desired look, and even dig things like cores out of them. But how would they be able to do that given the tools they had? It's important to note that many of the kinds of stone that ancient Egypt used to build things were incredibly hard and thus would have been tough to carve into with things like a chisel and hammer. Yet, not only were they able to do so, but they also made incredibly intricate designs that we can still view today. So, what is the answer here? How did the Egyptians have tools that could shape, carve, and dig into solid stone despite them being in a time when that shouldn't have been possible? One plausible answer could be that it was simply a matter of time, or they could have done something that we just don't know about. We are always in the process of learning about Egypt and its mysteries to this day, so perhaps it's just one that we're not going to solve for a while. Number 15. Pulley System Staying in Egypt for a bit, we now talk about the pulley system. There are a lot of references to the pulley system in ancient Egypt, 
which includes the 12th dynasty, which is said to have existed between 1991 and 1802 BC. In certain reports, the pulley system was identified as one of six simple machines that was used to lift weights, and that's a very apt way of defining it. But the mystery remains. How would they know how to design such a system that would use ropes and pulleys to lift something up? Granted, they did have rope before the pulley system, and they were definitely using it to lasso things or tie them up or even help to pull them along. It's totally within the realm of reasonable. But a pulley, well, that's something that isn't really all that basic. It's something you have to design and then put in the right places and then understand the forces that are in play to make it work effectively. And so, how did ancient Egypt and possibly Mesopotamia around the same period come up with the concept? The world right now may just have to keep it a mystery. Number 14. Lycurgus Cup We now head to ancient Rome to talk about a very unique item that was known as the Lycurgus Cup. And before you freak out, there is something quite special about that cup. It was made partially of some kind of special glass, but that matters because it was a party trick, if you will. The glass can reflect light in such a way that it will change colors depending on how that light hits it. And in the case of this cup, it's been saved and preserved and can change from red to green and back again depending on the light within its area. The reason the cup is so mystifying is that the color changing process happens on a level that goes well beyond what Roman cup makers should have been able to do in that time period. As such, this was either an incredibly lucky event that took place, or the Romans had something going for them that made them really good at making cups. No matter what the answer may be, this kind of cage cup is almost unheard of to find from ancient times today. Number 13. The Original Swiss Army Knife Which would... In today's world, the item and or phrase Swiss Army Knife is a reference to how you have everything you need for the job at hand. Many people have the literal Swiss Army Knife on them because it has so many handy tools and can help you in a time of need. But it would surprise you to learn that there was such a device in ancient Rome. Meet the so-called multi-tool, a handy fold-up device that contained a miniature knife, spatula, fork, toothpick, and spike. Crafted in the 3rd century AD, the tool could be toted around by a Roman soldier in his pocket, all while trekking through some dangerous territory. This is a very real thing, and you can find one in England right now. While the origins of this multi-tool are not well known, it is a rather clever thing that the ancient Romans were able to come up with such a device. It's also interesting to think about how many people may have actually used the device during the time period. Number 12. Damascus Steel this one might seem like another kind of cheating, but trust me when I say that Damascus steel is the real deal. In fact, it was so special that the exact recipe to make the perfect kind of Damascus steel has been lost, and so replicas of it are all that's available today. And if you're like me, and a big fan of the show Forged in Fire, you have no doubt watched Damascus Steel be created time and time again. It is a fascinating process that requires layering upon layering of different kinds of steel in different patterns, squished together and then layered again many times over. In fact, it can be up to hundreds of layers of Damascus Steel, which then provides some of the most beautiful blades and steel items that you could ever imagine. The steel is so much more than the steel we have today. It's known to be incredibly hard, but also malleable. And in fact, when the Crusaders had went up against the Middle East warriors that had Damascus steel swords, they learned the hard way just how sharp they could be. In fact, that was one of its greatest properties. It was a kind of steel that didn't dull, even when you abused it for years. If the recipe for the original Damascus steel had survived, it definitely would have been in more use today. Number 11. Marshall Islands Stick Chart Charts and maps are how many sailors and seafaring types have made it all around the world without becoming lost or getting caught up in currents and swells that they didn't mean to. What makes the Marshall Island stick chart so special, and thus worthy of the list, is that it's a literal stick chart that accurately maps the ocean swells around the islands and thus guides those who want to sail around it. 
The fact that the people of the islands were able to map these swells out long before certain advances in technology was an incredible thing in and of itself, but then when you add in that they could accurately map it all out on sticks and then get it to work, that is a pretty epic thing within its own right. Number 10. Ancient Greek Automatic Doors in today's society, automatic doors are almost expected when you go into things like stores or certain other buildings. You expect them to be there because they're a nice convenience. But what if I told you that the ancient Greeks had that technology as well? In one of their most famous temples in Alexandria, they had a set of doors that were truly automatic. The twist is that it was automatic via a special hydraulic system that would activate because the people trying to enter and exit. Its main purpose was to create a sense of mystery while suggesting divine power, and in the end, it may have not have been the most simple system to start up or maintain, but it did get the job done. And sometimes you just have to think that people go big on this kind of thing just to be able to show off. Number 9. An Ancient Refrigerator this was actually a real deal invention that the Persians made, and it was basically a house that could keep food cool while also producing ice for them to use. And they made all of this and maintained it without the need for electricity. Yeah. Now that is pretty impressive. As noted before, it makes sense that Persians would make it because it was hot there. The ice house would serve as a place for them to cool down, to store their food, and make sure that it wouldn't spoil and more. Necessity really is the mother of invention, and they had a need and they worked out how to get what they needed in the end. Number 8. Ancient Earthquake Detector now, here's a fun one that's had many archaeologists scratching their heads regarding how it was built and how its creators actually got it to work. You see, both then and now, natural disasters are something that people have to deal with all over the place. And thus, both then and now, certain people have had to try and create a technology that would allow them to detect that natural disaster before it strikes. In ancient China, one man came up with a seismoscope, you know, an earthquake detection machine. But not only did he make it, he presented it to the royal court, and apparently it actually worked. But how exactly did it work? Well, that's what people have been trying to figure out. All the records and schematics for this mysterious machine have been either vague, incomplete, or non-existent. Scientists have tried to replicate it in their own way and determine whether the man had actually made a working model. Some have even claimed to have perfectly recreated the device, but it's actually still unknown whether or not they got it to work. It may sound crazy that someone was able to make this in the days of ancient China, but at this point, why would you not believe it? Number 7. Nimrud Lens the Nimrud lens is a bit more of a mystery than some of the other items on this list. Not because we don't know how it worked, we do, but rather because it's nearly impossible to tell the entirety of its full function. It was found in 1850 and appears to have been part of an Assyrian culture, but as for what it did, there are multiple possible explanations. For example, not unlike its name would suggest, it could have been used as a lens in multiple ways. First, it could have been a magnifying glass of sorts, which is not all that far-fetched to think about. It could also have been used as a focusing glass to begin fires, which would have been useful. Some people also think it could have just been a decoration, but perhaps the world may never know. Number 6. The Antikythera Mechanism Here's a classic device that many people are still trying to piece together both figuratively and literally. The Antikythera mechanism was found in a shipwreck off the coast of a Greek island, and when they learned what the mechanism did, everyone would become stunned. Why is that? Well, that's because the Antikythera mechanism is a computer. Now, you shouldn't be freaking out because it's not a computer in the sense of how we think about them today. It's what you would call an analog computer, in that you would insert data into it via certain knobs and buttons, and then you would get the information back that you desired. What information? Well, that would be the placement of the stars in the sky, the eclipses that you might run into at sea, and other astronomical phenomena. Obviously, the question is how, 
They even did it and how it existed that scientists have been trying to solve for quite some time. The device was created in at least 80 BC, if not before then. So the idea of them having and making this computer made to come from somewhere, and given the complicated nature of it, it's shocking that they were even able to come up with it at all. As for that line about putting it together literally, scientists have been trying to fully recreate the device, but with minimal success. Going to show that sometimes the ancient people knew more than the modern ones. Number 5. Norias of Hama Now there's a fancy name if there ever was one, but then again we are here at the fancy banana where things get fancy all the time. These can be found in the ancient Syrian city of Hama, and they're a giant ancient water wheel that makes the ones we have today look very basic. So basic, in fact, that it kind of hurts. Evidence of these ornate water wheels date back as far as the 5th century CE, making them quite old indeed, and proof that the ancients knew how useful water could be when harnessed properly. These were originally constructed on a river to move water through a series of aqueducts that fed farms all across the settlement, becoming so iconic that they eventually became the symbol of the city. It's simply amazing to look at today, and a lot of people are fighting to ensure that they don't get destroyed by modern construction efforts. Number 4. Aleopile Now, as has been established, the Greeks did have quite the way of getting things done that boggles the mind even to this day, and the Aleopile is another example of that. Made by Hero of Alexandria, this was a kind of basic steam turbine that used blades and water to get the desired effect. That's right, there was a kind of steam turbine in ancient Greece. And yes, there have been plenty of stories about these kinds of things being built by Archimedes, however, those were not real or were actually heavily exaggerated. This device is considered to be the first recorded steam engine or reaction steam turbine, but there is a twist is that while it did work, it was not practical or truly useful during its time, and so other steam engines and turbines weren't directly influenced by it. Number 3. The Baghdad Battery This so-called battery was a set of pots that were found together in 1936, but were dated from anywhere between 150 BC and 650 AD. That is quite the swing, but sometimes you don't get accurate dates when you're doing things like this. The battery was comprised of ceramic pots, a tube of copper, and a rod of iron, and it's believed that when originally made, there would have been a liquid within it that could have helped to hold everything together and conduct the electricity that it was intended to do. These three curious objects. However, that's also where the problem comes in, because electricity, being used in this way, was basically unheard of for that period of time. You have to remember that people were actually scared of lightning because they felt that it was the weapon of the gods, and yet they were willing to make batteries? It's really kind of odd. The debate about this device got so big that Mythbusters even did an episode about it, and they found out that not only could it generate electricity, it could also be used for various purposes, which included electroplating, acupuncture, and even giving someone a godly experience. It's shocking, I know. Number 2. The Iron Pillar of Delhi The Iron Pillar of Delhi is a structure that's 7.21 meters high with a 41 centimeter diameter that would be constructed and now stands in a complex in India. It was not where it was originally built, but it's where you'll find it now. As for why the thing is so special, it's made out of metals that never rust, and thus it still stands today. Another important element are the inscriptions that were placed into that metal, stating various things that are still translated even to this day, and it turns out that sometimes a pillar is more than a pillar. Number 1. A Stone Tool Finally, and arguably the most basic, we have stone tools. It doesn't sound all that impressive compared to everything else on this list. I mean, they're made out of stone, and it makes sense that humanity would have them in its earliest years, but that's where the rub comes into play. Because these stone tools have been found in various nature, construction sites, and more, all over the world, and from many different time periods. 
including ones that have helped us to rewrite history in terms of where humanity spread out from, when they spread out, and how advanced they were at the time. Plus, you also have to remember that they were making these stone tools by hand without anything to help shape them outside of other stones and hard surfaces. They had to figure out what kind of shapes to forge these tools into and how to make them useful, and somehow, some way they did so. From that came inventions that spanned the course of history. Well, that's all from the realm of historical inventions that should not have been possible, but somehow were at the time. Were you amazed by what you saw here today? And which of these inventions of the past did you feel was the most impressive? Maybe there's another historical oddity that should have been featured on this list. You should let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.